Gating Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. Monday, January the 31st, and we're looking at the Dow down one at 34,723. I'm impressed. I'm impressed because whenever I see a sudden rise in the market in the last hour after kind of being choppy but not doing all that much uh, from the day before, the price of the day before, very often you give back 20, maybe even 30% of the last hour's extra extra push to the upside. Well, we did that, but now the Dow is trying to come back. So there are, there, there are so many conflicting things, and in the den was a couple of things were mentioned. I wanted to, I'm going to take that. Thank you very much, G7. I want to use that as well. So here we go. The, the strength... <coughs> of support in the 34,000 to 33,500s has been really good. I'm suspecting what I said for my subscribers to my opening call when I had my very long uh, video on Saturday, trying to just go through all the different complexities of the market, mm -hmm. was that I see enough strength to build a base, and now I'm seeing enough strength to start to try to go to the upside but there's still a cap on the upside just at the moment. And there are a couple of reasons for that. I don't want to get uh, Tommy Jr. Uh, just uh, in his show, the market kickoff uh, a few minutes ago, was talking about the, the difference, uh, talking about the variance of the COVID, et cetera. And welcome back. We missed you for the last two sessions. Um, that's kind of, that's really important <clears throat> because it's how does it play out with uh, job interviews, uh, just, you know, all the things that pertain to having a, a society that's able to move around and do the things that one normally does, and ha that's been curtailed for two years now. How do, how do we come back? So let me go through this in, in my way, which is looking at the strength of the different indicators, and you can see the nine period, the pink nine period moving average is still sharply below the 14 period moving average in the Dow daily. The 200 period moving average <clears throat> has been a repellent and a propellant, but only very slightly to the upside. Mostly it's a magnet. And every time the market wiggles and, and shakes up and down and up and down like a yo-yo, 34,530, the 200 period moving average has become the place to go to. Um, we're also looking at the MACD. Now the histograms start to turn up. I like that. That's good. The stochastic finally is out of the 20% range and the 35%. That's at least for, for five sessions after the low that was made a week ago. That's kind of pathetic. It should be at 48 to 53%, but it's good that it's rising. The unbalanced volume really looks very weak. And that speaks to the issues that I wanted to come to in a few minutes, and I'll do that uh, when I'm talking about the uh, one, one sector indicator and one stock. So in the meantime, if you're looking at the weekly chart, it's in a sell mode in the daily chart, in the weekly chart. Uh, everything here is weak, and the nine period close under the 14 period moving average. Doesn't say you can't rally to the 35,230 nine period moving average, another six, seven hundred points from here. But at the same time, um, we are looking at a situation that says a, a great deal of damage has been done, and that has to be prepared. Look at the SP, slightly different. Um, we are now long a variant of the S&P. Uh, that's fine. And one of the things we're looking at here, leg B has finally started. The MACD is also weak, but the histogram's improving. Stochastic's 28%. That is kind of pathetic. And the unbalanced volume is very poor. And the 9 period moving average is still way underneath the 14. But that's how you start when you've had a major setback from 48.18 down to 42.22. You need time. And you need price to be improving in a concerted way. And I think today we're starting to see that that's a good sign. Weekly chart is still horrible. 
And that monthly chart went all the way down to the 14 period exponential moving average of 42.42. Remember, we went down to 42.22. And now it's nicely above the green nine period moving average as we go into the end of January. Let's go. So what we really want to see is 45.85, the 14 period moving average. You want to see a close above that. That'll be very important. You do not want to see another test of 4,400 in the uh, daily chart of the S&P, which is the 200 period moving average, because that's just going to confirm for me that the pattern that I was about to do, draw in, and I'll draw it in now, could have a lower arch formation. But in the meantime, I'm giving it a lot of room. I'm saying there's a chance in the next two weeks or so we could have a move higher, uh, very choppy, but basically trying to get higher. And so far today, up 28 is very good at 44.60. The QQQ, couple of, many questions came in. I'll deal with them right now. QQQ in leg B, I'm calling it a gray leg B in the daily chart. That's a pretty big move from 408 down to 334. Uh, that's kind of bear market material, but that's not the point. The point is that those NDX 100 stocks right now are really should have a good bounce to the upside and we'll treat it first as a bounce and then see what happens. Let's just see for fun. Let's go to the ARKK. That's Kathy Wood's, uh, whoops, well, not Bark. But I play tennis with Bark, um, but with ARKK. Yeah, nice move up, up 4.36 at 73.28, being decimated from the high just at about 160 to the low of about 84. Got, yeah, 64, got overcut in half. Um, very, very poor action. Now let's do a couple of things. So the QQQ, the question, a couple of questions came in. If the Qs are in a sell mode, what would I expect in a decent bounce given the oversold condition, especially as I uh, related it on my in my webinar on Saturday, my webinar on my video on overview video on Saturday. Uh, with the VIX index coming down, if it continues to come down, well, it's very important. We've had an internal low December the 31st in the general market. December the, did I say December the, no. Yeah, well, yeah, December the, let me just go back to this again. Uh, that was in the stock market. It was, yep, December the 1st. Then there was that big rally up to 36,952 in the Dow. Then it moved down to the 33,150 area. In the QQQ, we saw something very different. We smashed through the December 1st uh, low, and that was a low at uh, 378. We went all the way down to 334. So something very different. Now, is this the start of a brand new move in the QQQs? It could very well be. Uh, at this point, I just want to deal with it uh, to say that in terms of the oversold conditions, absolutely, you, you're looking at a, the, a good chance of a decent bounce. Now, that, that pertains to the QQQs monthly chart. I had a question about the monthly chart. The day's young. The Q's today up 6.26, could actually push all the way to 360, the 14 period exponential moving average on the daily chart, and that'll change dramatically the uh, monthly chart pattern in the, in the QQQ. I, I need to talk about this candle, because if it actually does push up quite a bit more, we'll have a Chapman Roman candle at a top, close to a top. What happens after that? We're talking about, I'll be back, Dallas now. I'll, Forty-seven points. Is Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. So as I, I was saying, we've got the QQQ. So if there's a really strong session today in the, at the close for the QQQs, then this monthly chart, if it's able to close today, it's a monthly chart. So today's the last day. Got another many hours to go. So if there's a close, I don't know if we can do it. It has to get to 368. That's another 10 points higher. You know, with the squeezes we've seen, let's just say. Anyway, what I would say then, at any point intra-month, if there is a close, that is today, January, and we start of February, and there is a close at any point intra-month, I can't tell you the exact number because we haven't got the exact close, but somewhere under 355 on any two days in the general market, preferably I'd like to say on a weekly because it's got to be in a shorter time frame, but we can start off with the two days, three uh, close below 355. There's a chance that intraday month, intra month, February, we'll go down and we will test the 334 level. I'm just saying that's the technique that I have in this particular candle. It's not there. I'm saying if it gets there, because I'm not going to be here at four o'clock to tell you. So I'll be able to tell you tomorrow. But that's what I'm looking at. The IWM is having a really nice bounce. I have to call it a bounce. It did make a little V-shaped pattern in the on-balance volume, but all the technicals are just terrible. This is still the laggard. So that late December, January uh, phenomenon that we see every few years where the small caps, the iShares, Russell 2000, really have a fantastic series of gains. Not yet. It's the exact opposite. So we'll see if it's delayed or whatever it is. But no matter what happens, it's the 208 to 212 area in February that's going to be absolutely imperative to monitor because if it stalls there and then starts to come down, this monthly candle right now, closing anyway around here, that's not a good sign. That takes me to, I'm going to get out of order now. I'm going to, it takes me to what was mentioned in the den, TROW. I'd use this just kind of as a benchmark all the way up. And then I said, you know what? I just have to watch. We're not going to. We had. We didn't do anything. This is T Road Price actively managed funds and programs. Look at this candle. It made a high. Five was that five or six months ago? Six months ago, it had a high of two hundred twenty-four point oh four. That was in August. 
And look what happens. You know how I've been talking about these these double top V-shaped patterns? It's just a, cu a cup formation or a V-shaped formation. Mostly it's been V-shaped formations. How incredible it is that weeks or months later, sometimes the price of whatever we're following goes right back to where it was within pennies. 224.04 was T. row prices high back on somewhere around August or so. And then it pulls back sharply to the 180s. And then it rallies 50 points to 223.26. A dollar below the previous high makes an inverted A, a V shaped formation like the dreaded H, takes it out and plummets to the low that was made just uh, on Friday, in fact, at. 143.64. So that's saying to me, this is something to monitor in the general market because the actively managed funds and programs, who this is not a this is not a thing that you want to see for an actively managed fund. This is terrible. And to go with that is Charles Schwab, which I have liked, still like, but I don't like the action today. Down 235 at 86.56. Yeah, it's part of the IAI, which we own from way back to 24th of March of 2020, um, which is still acting quite nicely here. But Schwab, what was it, a news event? Something happened? Suddenly it's down from the close. Uh, on Friday, it hits 90. This morning, it goes to 84.92. It's now at 86.62. What's, what, what's with that? So together with T. Rowe Price, Schwab, a brokerage company, I, I think this is still going to have a great move. I don't know what's going on right now. I do like it. I, I want to see if it can. I, I don't want to see a break under 85 at any point. But in this particular moment, no positions. We're just looking at it. And I'm just surprised that it had this. It must have been a news related item. I don't think that earnings or anything. But what's really important is that within the context of uh, what was mentioned in the DAN by G7, T. Rowe Price is something to keep your eye on in the big picture because it's uh, it's still underperforming, although today's up 1.5%. That's a pretty good number percentage-wise. All right, and Charles Schwab, because I do believe that investors are coming back. I thought they were coming back uh, over the last uh, week or so. Maybe they got really disappointed in early Friday action by going lower again. We'll see. In the meantime, back at the ranch, let's get on with what we're looking at, which is that the semiconductor index is up seven at 269.50. This is a nice uh, thing. I almost decided that we would finally decide to go long today. Didn't do that. Uh, I, I am looking at this and saying, all right, uh, semiconductors, everything I read has got such a mixed picture that. You can see it in the chart. The chart is showing a mixed picture. But if the semiconductors are able in the next, this week, in fact, it's just starting afresh on Monday, if they can go to 282, they're at 269 right now, 282 would say, you know what? This can last a lot longer, and it's really important that semiconductors are doing well. But they have acted terribly up until now. Okay, now the next thing I want to look at is gold. Gold is trading up 10 at 1797 it sounds great but you know what after the smash that it had from the 1850s down to the 1780 level this is a well a well earned rectangle formation i drew this in the other day i said this is the level that i'm looking at we should be trading within it yes we are trading within it and it's just saying gold is not quite the place to be at this particular point there are other areas that are working therefore money is not using the gold or the gld or in this case the gdx uh, as anything but intraday uh, activity that means i need to look at silver and then i will look at silver si Silver is up 18 cents at 22.48. It went under the uh, trend line support. It's just not going anywhere right now. It seems it's just stuck in a range. And that takes me to the dollar. But what I want to look at, and I'll get to that in a moment, dollar's pulling back uh, down 24 ticks at 96.98. I do believe this is a peak C. I, could give it an I can't give it an alternate count because the starting point was below. Oh, I can. I can call this an E slash C. I don't really need to. It is a leg D in the monthly, in the weekly chart, and a leg C in the monthly. Let's just watch it because if the dollar goes under 96.45 uh, this week, 
without making a new recovery high, that doji candle is saying, okay, dollars in for risk. Maybe gold, it isn't acting like it now, but maybe gold will have a bigger bounce. We'll see. We'll watch this very closely. EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair should be bouncing. It is. It is up um, 0 0.005. Uh, but that's not a great chart, man. And the rectangle formation, remember, sharply lower, goes right back, tries to get back into the rectangle formation. And that would make the one point, give it to you exactly, the 1.12 area significant. We're at 1.11. Looking at the USD JPY. Uh, yep, that's just holding nicely at 115.39. It's still moving higher, just like it goes in tune with the with the dollar but not at the same percentage values. I'll be back in a moment because we want to look at the BTC which is Bitcoin, Bitcoin trading up 50 points to stop. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and this is the uh, the 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 start of the of the of the week. It's the end of the month. And it's the beginning of the month tomorrow. So this is really an important uh, a pivot point in the market. Why? Because look, we uh, crude oil. We're looking at right now up. Five cents at 86.67. The last four sessions has been a real struggle. And I've been saying, could be wrong, 
But I think we're making some kind of a short-term top here. Is it time to do the SCO, which is the inversion three times? Uh, no, I just, I'm just i saying that I think crude oil, and, and for all those of you who asked me and sent me messages over the weekend, look, CVX, a great company, just a fantastic company, Chevron Corporation, multinational. I'm talking about stock market-wise. Peak D in the data at 137 round number high. It's up today 72 cents, but it's below the 137 level at 131. It's a leg D, possibly a peak D in the weekly and a leg D in the monthly. I think that it's time. Look, MRO is one we had. We took profits. We got stopped out. Um, made a peak D. It's same thing. Look at these four candles right now. Just suggesting maybe there could still be one more spike to the upside. But we are in an area that says just maybe a pullback. Uh, uh, did I do Halliburton? I had a question. Yeah, Halliburton made a peak D. Slumberger, did I do that? Slumberger. Oh, I had it all done because this is one that goes way back decades, and I don't know why it's not all notated here. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, it's done at peak. Peak. Is it an A? 80, 68, 80. Yes. Peak A, peak B, peak C, and there's a peak D. Um, still holding, all of them are holding really well. So I'm just saying, this is my belief that I think we're in, a, in for a little bit of a cons consolidation. Um, no matter how I count it, the weekly charts are the ones that still say, hey, any pullback, that's where you've got to look at them again because crude oil could be in play. We could be having a slowdown of the whole, um, um, you know, with, with Russia, with Putin, with the oil situation and Germany. We could be having some kind of a slowdown of the uh, conflagration as far as oil is concerned. So maybe we see a bit of a pullback and natural gas pulling back a little bit from the day's high has had a very good move in leg C. But look what happens. It does. It's got like a week and a half, two weeks of action going from one peak to the other than a huge pullback. Do we get do we get another pullback from 4.733 up 0.092 and then a leg D? But it is outside the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone and this falling axe formation in the weekly. Time alone can do it. So it needs now to prove that it's using the trend line as support to push into the five point, I'd say five point uh, 30, 5.50 area. So we'll see. Um, so I just wanted to go through those uh, um, questions. So I had a question about that and that and that and that. Uh, then a question, I want to deal with the questions that came up first, and then I'll continue with my overview, uh, look at the diff different sectors. So CCI is Crown Castle Core uh, REIT Towers. We once had this at a fabulous game and just missed a huge couple of moves in the monthly chart, and I'm still looking at it, and I'm saying this is on my agenda as a potential buy. So the question is said, I, I want to start a position. I'm looking at, I'm prepared to start a few positions. I mean, I'm prepared to put on a few positions because I think looking out is going to go higher. I still have this as a peak C. Look at that candle, huge green candle in, in December. A whopper of a candle to the downside in January. What is that saying? Well, that's saying that a lot of work needs to be done with CCI training 179.40 down $1.10. I... I it's got, this is a pattern that I often draw, and I only draw it because the technical tools are there to draw it. I draw this, it's like a, it's like a curve and a bigger curve, just using the technical tools that TradeStation has. And that just says, within this half moon or early moon projection, where would there be a breakout in CCI? And the answer to that is that if there is a move over the next two weeks, I want two full candles in the monthly chart of the long wick candle of last last week, going from 170 um, intraday to about 180. Now, what I want to see is within two weeks, it's got to, I, I say it's got to hold 178. Um, why is it? No, sorry. It has to hold 176s. A close below 176 can stall everything, but it can go the intraday. I'm just saying on a weekly basis, it's got to hold that. But on a weekly basis, I want to see an intraweek, a daily close above 185. 
above the 200 period moving average of 184.71. Why? Because 186 is the nine period and 14 period moving averages um, in the weekly chart. It, the closer you can get to that, the greater the chance that that becomes a magnet for about a week or so, and then you could start to see the move higher. So it's a process. This is not a one-time thing that I say, oh yeah, yeah, it's down today, $1.75. I'm just saying there's a process that I'd be looking at. Where would I personally go in? I might have to sacrifice some uh, of the uh, price movement to the upside by saying I'd rather be a little late and buy a higher, a peak A, maybe a, a pullback, and then a leg B, and maybe a little bit of a pullback from B, maybe even in leg B, as intraday pulls back. I want to see a nice leg B. That's CCI. Next question I had was, I did that, I did that, I did that. Oh, Amgen. Amgen, I mentioned this on Friday, is a very complex kind of notation in the Chapman Wave methodology, but I do have it at a peak C. It looks like a D. It's acting like a D. But Amgen is in the whole area of biotech, pharmaceuticals, this whole area that has just been in a sharp down move for quite some time, if you look at the IBB. So the question was, where would the IBB be a place to start looking at in terms of building long positions? And I would say we've seen so many of these charts that a big spike up after the Monday last week low, and then it pops up and then it pulls back and it either holds or it breaks the left side low. If it broke the left side low, you have to ask for a lot more from the from the chart formation. That's my impression. So I would just say if, if I can see IBB, the NASDAQ Biotech ETF trading any time this week, trading, not just popping up and holding, but trading in the 133s for maybe two days. I'm not really worried where the close is. I want to actually see it trading there. I will start to look at this and say, hey, counter trend balance, is this in the in the running? The, oh, just beat me, Ruby. I was just about to say XLF is really important. Why? Because the financials like to see it, it's not the only thing, but they like to see the yields go higher. And the TLT is down 76 uh, ticks at 142.39. And that's allowing the yields to go a little bit higher. And that's really helping the XLF because XLF took a big hit. I forgot to type that in. I, I wrote it on Friday and then I forgot to type it. 4170 was the high of the 13th. 41, that was a good day, 41.70, the high of the 13th. Okay, and that goes in red, sell mode, sell mode in the XLF, goes to the 200 feet moving average, uses that as a bit of a springboard, it pops up from the low of 30, in the 3660s, I think, pops up to th in the 39, 37 area, pulls back, and now it's trading at 38.70. I think it's going to be about that weekly chart in the XLF. Not 100% yet. I'll be back in a moment. Browser Chapter, Target Technicians Hour. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Pedro White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back, and we're looking at the uh, two-minute uh, S&P E-mini. It had a fabulous move off the 200-period exponential moving average, running all the way to 44, I believe, 63. Yep, and it made a peak F top. Now it's making the potential dreaded H pattern, and the 10-minute uh, chart has gone to a peak D. So this is where there might be a little bit of a, a, a pullback in the market, but the fact that there was buying is saying a lot of people are trying to try to pick the bottom and that's important. I'd shown, um, and so the XLF needs to get to the 3960 area, and at least this week. Otherwise, it's stalled. It's going to make the dreaded H pattern. It's going to stick around, uh, making the 3747 200 period moving average uh, key support. A couple of things uh, just before I run out of time here. So in the den, uh, no, this is in the Tiger YouTube, CSEE -E is what an old favorite of mine, Sealed Air. Uh, just an old favorite in that I, I've seen the name for years and years. I don't think we've ever owned Sealed Air, and yet it's just a fantastic company. Look, it's gone from under 20 to, to uh, 60, the high of uh, just over 70 the other day. This is since the March 2020 low. Um, it's it's just a really good company. Stair step moved to the upside, you know, almost like an up channel, beautiful up channel. You can see the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly, weekly chart, peak E, daily chart at peak E. Now what is it going to do? I'm just going to say keep your eye on this stock. I like it very much. But the, the tension between the buys and the sells right now between uh, cyclicals, this is almost like a cyclical stock in a sense, uh, between cyclicals, um, the uh, the infrastructure because steel air is also part of infrastructure. Uh, this is you can see the tussle going on right now. So I could do this. This is a, a pattern that once I drew this in, and then someone sent an email saying, "Oh my God, the diamond pattern!" And over the years, I found that the diamond pattern. I, I don't have time to tell the story of my black diamond on, on the ski slope now, but um, think of black diamond. It sounds like it should be awful and it should be plummeting, but actually just think of it as the potential for a dreaded H or a breakout V-shaped pattern. Just treat it as, as a, a designation of in the middle of a range right now at 67.57. If you've been long SEE, sealed air at 67.57 now, down 31 cents. I would just hold the position. I'd get a little concerned if it closed under 65.50. Give me a yell and we'll look at it again if it does that. But what you really want to see is it started leg B, held very well in the in the big downturn in the market. I like it. Um, is it going to go much higher? This candle was a very ugly candle, the candle of the third of the 20th of January, 68 round number low, 70.31 high. I, I would just say, look, it tried to break 68 today, which is 68.16. If it can close above 68.35, 68.42, I'd say great. Now it can tackle this full 
candle here. I do like it just in this environment right now. Um, I just be. I just watch it closely in case it starts to slide. Next question came in about DWAC, D-W-A-C. Um, oh, it has almost the same pattern as seal there, isn't it? A completely different digital world acquisitions. Um, this is one that I kept my eye on uh, for subscribers, say, just as a trade. I don't, I, I don't like these um, uh, SPACs. I just I don't trust them at all. But as a trade, maybe we'll we'll take a position sometime just for a big pop up, or if it's a slide, maybe shorting it. I don't know. Uh, it's having a nice move today, but I don't like that big candle. It's the same candle, and then it's, it's struggling to get there. It has full the gap, and that's good. If it starts to trade in seventy eight point twenty, I think it's going to go to the high of the candle of the twenty first, which is at eighty three fifty. But if it starts to pull back today and goes under seventy. I'd say stay away. Next question I had was, oh, XLE, XLE is, XLW, no, there's no XLW. XLE is the energy sector holding, well, I've got this as a peak C. I suspect there will be another pop to the upside. In the long term, this is looking fantastic. It is an E in the uh, monthly chart, but it's making higher highs and higher lows. That's what you look for in the bull phase. Just the shorter term says, there should be, in fact, I'm going to draw this in now. We'll follow it closely. My eye says 68 resistance, 62 support over the next week. And that's kind of what I'm looking at now. Dow is down 45, S&P is up 21. Uh, let's see where that went to. This is what I like to do here. Uh, look, this is the same technique we use for subscribers to explain the different stock position uh, index positions or stocks using Chapman methodology so we can see the two minute chart is in the sell mode the, the 10 minute chart is just pulling back if it closes if the closes under 433 at any point today it says we've had that big bounce and now you've got to be careful end of the month maybe some selling comes in again next question i had was um uh, yeah we did that we did that oh um yeah, where was it? I see that. Uh, or oh, oh, where was the question? Oh, man, I forgot to write it down. Uh, could I look at? Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, uh, XLE. So I did the XLE. Um, whoops, I don't type it in the wrong place. I did the XLE. I like it very much. Um, and then those are the parameters that I'm looking for, looking out for 2022. I think this is part of it. I mean, if you look at the, um, if you look at, this is energy. But if the same energy is going into commodities, they're all, everything's rising. Look, W, um, wheat, very poor action, pulling back. But now look at soybeans. Soybeans made a new recovery high, hit uh, 1496. Um, and now it's leg E. So it too could have a bit of a pullback at two Brutus. Um, look at the leg D. Now it's pulling back from leg D. Might have a bit of a dip, but look at corn. Corn had a fantastic move. 625 had a height today of 642 and a half. Leg E finally broke out of that big rectangle we've been looking at for uh, about eight months, six months now, more. Yeah, it's about, it's almost a year. And there it is. It finally broke above and now it's pulling back a bit. So I'm saying that the inflationary aspect, and that would include the XLE, is, is still in play. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, we have Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. Victor, how are you? Good, good, good. I think the train has just left the station for a good short, like 2008 and nine. But where would you load up on SQQQ? It split on January 13th. I, I think it's a daily trading vehicle. Yeah, Where would you buy that at? So now it's a 39.19. I think it was in the threes. It must be a 10 for one spread. This is peak A, yeah. peak B, peak C, and peak D. So I'm going to put this in the category of hold. Don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be buying it right now. The SQQ is the three times short the QQQs. Reason being, I think there's enough energy in the QQQ itself. They just, mm -hmm. they are, you know, they are so oversold. But I, I'm just going to say to you, uh, why didn't, I'm looking at this as well to see when will the next downturn be. But that says if the Q, SQQQ at 39.21 takes out and closes under 37 in the next two, three days, 
Yeah, it says that the QQQs are going to still go a little higher. So I, I, we've, we've had a huge pullback in the QQQs, the NDX 100. Just mm. have a little patience. You're going to get your opportunity right. to short Thanks. soon. Thanks. Thanks for calling. Folks, we'll be back for the final segment. The Dow is now up 11. S&P is up 30. There was some selling going on. What was we? Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. In this final segment, what I want you to do, as I say, I did my a, a really long a webinar on a Saturday just covering a, a huge amount of stuff. And what we were looking at is what's been working, what's not working, what could... What could have bounces, but what could have bigger moves in 2022? And within that context, look at this. I'm looking at uh, XLB. This is the materials. So the pattern that I'm looking at suggests that the materials, at least in the shorter term, short, maybe even to intermediate term, is just stuck in a range between maybe 85. They're trading at 83 XLB right now, up 42 cents. But you know, I would not be surprised if the 78 level gets tested as well. So it's a leg D in the in the monthly chart, leg F slash B, probably an F uh, in the in the daily in the weekly chart and PD. So materials kind of slowing down a little bit right here. So just let's over give an overview uh, for today. Uh, we're looking at the VIX index pulling back sharply down 26.78, down 88 cents. I suspect that that VIX spike to 38.94 is a significant at least short, maybe even intermediate term high in the VIX. 
That doesn't mean to say that the, the low has been made in the in the market because what I am looking at is the testing, testing, testing that we've seen, um, say in the Dow, that whole 34,000 to 33,500 level, that's building a fabulous base. So we could do some retesting. It's how we break to the upside and how we hold that's very really important. So now I'm going to go to the S&P because that has a slightly different, a little bit better chart formation. This is a leg B, a gray leg B in the, in the daily chart chart at 4467 you want to see by Wednesday of this week a good close into the 4486 to 4490 area that'll be very impressive that's what you want to see QQQ having a fabulous oversold bounce nice percentage gain and it's up almost seven at 358 here you want to see a, a two days of closes above 363. Uh, yep, 360. Have a wonderful day. Stick out. Tell me your blind back and tell me your blind back. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time. Check out both people. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned. I think you've got a lot